Emirates took up the film. Emirates and South African Airlines, oh. you know, took up the okay. film. But what happened with SA Airlines was SA Airlines was going down. <laughs> we don't talk about it. It's, you know, we, we, you know, it's, <laughs> it's never happens. <laughs> In this country, we act like we don't know what you're talking about. What is he talking about? Okay. 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 No. SA Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Story of Her with Gina. Um, I'm hoping that everybody is keeping warm and is keeping safe. Um, in Africa, it's winter time. I'm going to be introducing Roy in a moment, but I don't think uh, winter and the weather in Nigeria gets as cold as South Africa. But uh, yes, let's everybody I'm hoping is warm, but we all have to keep safe as well from COVID and that everybody is safe from that perspective. And uh, wherever you're joining us from, welcome, welcome, welcome. I have a, an exciting program uh, planned for us today. We are speaking to Roy Osuji. Uh, Roy is uh, from Nigeria and he is a content producer and filmmaker. I'm very excited to be speaking uh, to him this afternoon about his upcoming film, uh, but I also just want to do a little introduction, a small introduction later on. Um, and I just also want to have my brother here, Michael, you guys know Michael. Michael, please say a word. Word. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you um for joining us from wherever you are joining us i hope you guys are keeping cool where it is winter and those of you that are experiencing a bit of sunshine and warm weather send some love our way um as i mentioned earlier today we are joined by roy we're very excited to have him here um to talk about uh some of uh the work he does but also just to talk about i think the industry and what it's um like showing up in the industry. We're hoping that you're going to enjoy your time with us. Mm -hmm. As you watch this, please, 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 we love hearing from you. Share with us some of your thoughts. Um, let us know what you um, think about um, our conversation. We will also then be posting important information. We're hoping that uh, Roy will give us the inside scoop uh, with regards to release dates uh, for his up and coming projects and um, where people can get in touch with him as well. So, uh, Wendy was very excited to open up um, her platform, Story of Her with Gina, to have a conversation about some of um, the exciting work you're doing, but also just to talk about what it is like to be um, a, a, a producer uh, in your sector. And I also think that, you know, um, film, film is such an amazing, can, has the potential to be such an amazing platform when it comes to telling important stories or bringing um, attention and highlighting certain um, things that happen in society. And so I'm looking forward to, to, to hearing from you a bit about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Absolute pleasure to meet you. Thank you for making the time to be. So without any further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Wendy. Uh, Wendy's gonna tell us a bit more about Roy and uh, we've put together a bit of a bio there that we're just gonna be sharing with our folks that are joining us tonight so that they, so that they uh, have a bit more information about who you are. I do want to read the bio out, um, although it will be in the description box, but for the, um, you know, for the sake of this conversation, I would like us to just have a bit of a background of who Roy is and where he's coming from and his intentions type of. So uh, in 2011, Roy founded Alvary Creatives. I just love that name. Um, I just want to know, the, you know, I, I kind of like, 
such an aesthetically pleasing name. <laughs> Albury Creatives, a media and content production company that produces radio and TV programs as well as films and documentaries. Our last project, a film advocating against human trafficking and irregular migration, was officially released to the Nigerian cinemas in 2020. It was also included in, in all the Emirates in-flight entertainment, um, you know, entertainment uh, programs, I suppose, up until August 2020 and has been acquired by Africa Magic Urban. Mm. Now I lost my place. Oh, Wendy, hold on to your feelings. <laughs> okay, so where am I now? Roy? Urban, Africa Magic yes. Urban. Um, he is currently working on the production of a film on mental health. Interesting. So you know you're going to be back here because everybody knows I'm about mental health. Uh, I'm passionate about mental health as somebody who has been down that road and is still on the recovery. So we will have him back, guys, uh, from what I'm reading on this bio. Elvery Creatives it has also been offering transportation and logistic services for Unilever Nigeria since 2020. Quite an industrious firm. <laughs> Hardworking firm. So, uh, yes, welcome, Roy. It's so lovely to have you on Story of Her. And having read some of the, the projects that you've been involved in and the current project that's upcoming now, Handicapped, I can see a very clear fit with our platform where you fit in. Mm. Um, yes, so absolutely. So, welcome. And can we just hear from you um, where your work, where, where your passion for this industry started? Thank you, Wendy and Michael. And it's good to be here with you guys today. Um, always enjoy watching, watching um, your you know, YouTube channel. I'm so honored. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you and Michael, I watch, I watch your, your back and forth. And I learn a lot and I laugh a lot too. Mm -hmm. You know. So I'm happy to be here today. Michael, it's great good to you. see you finally. Absolute, it's an absolute uh, pleasure, Roy. Thank you for your feedback, actually. It was Thanks. great hearing some of your thoughts on the conversation we had about hypergamy. I do still feel that. You know, there will never be enough time to cover that conversation, but hopefully we could have you respond no. and reply to it. Yes, in, <laughs> in yes. I think he would, he would have great insight into some of the things we were talking about. Yeah. So we should have that conversation with him. And in fact, maybe it's a movie yeah. idea. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, maybe we'll talk about okay. that later. So, <laughs> Okay, tell us, so, um, tell us, so, how, how did you get into the movie industry? I think I'd like to just have, it's an interesting career to be in because I imagine many, many people would love to be in the industry, but, um, but how did you just land in it, in the middle of it and to the point of making your own films? Okay, so uh, I started out as, um, as a sales and marketing person. Um, being brand manager, marketing manager, and all that stuff, you know, and that's professionally working with various brands. Okay. And then I met a guy who was a radio producer. Mm -hmm. So he had a program and he wanted me to sell it. And this was my first um, entry into uh, the media space, okay. and the entertainment how long, space. How long ago was this? This was in 2007. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so he wanted me to to um, sell his radio program, you know, and he had a good idea. I was doing, I mean, uh, I, I, I listened to the program, it was um, some, something about Africa. And um, I was like, okay, you know what, let me see. I never knew anything about media or entertainment. I just consumed it. I never, I didn't know how to start, but I just dived into it. So I was, I got into it accidentally. The opportunity came. And I just jumped on it. Yes. You know, not, not As really one last when it. opportunity presents itself. Yes. Yeah. You know, so um, I got into it. And then, you know, we started to look for ways to get um, sponsorship or adverts mm -hmm. uh, for his program. And then I went to, uh, then it was Celtel. Celtel. 
Oh, I'm not supposed to mention any brand. I don't know. But... You, no, no, no. That's <laughs> Anyway, I you, got to, you are forgiven. You know, <laughs> okay. Okay, so you know, we got to a telecoms um provider and um we did a presentation. You know, went went to an advertising agency, we sold it to them, and they had um they didn't have any accounts then, but they had contacts with this company, and then they gave me the contact and we went there for a presentation. And the guy in charge of uh, marketing was very interested, and then you know, he said we should go to his advertising um, agency and we got there and that was how we started to get, um, you know, uh, paid ads for the radio program. Okay. And then, no, to, to 2010 and then I started Alvary Creatives. Now, the Alvary Creatives actually Calvary. I just took out the C. Yes, and then I was wondering the if there's the connection. <laughs> I was. Oh, I'm, I'm because I kept on reading it. I felt like there's something missing in the word. I kept on trying to put it in the sea in the word. You said, that was disturbed behind Alvarez. I just wanted something sweet, you okay. know? And, yeah. you know, and then I did that. And then I started the business in 2010. And then in 2016, I said to myself, you know, I wanted to do something else. I wanted to do TV. I wanted to do a series for TV. Yes. Because most of my colleagues um, from radio, they're going to series for TV. Mm. But I said to myself, I said, um, um, I don't want to do the same thing. Mm. I want to do something that has a message. Yes. Oh, something okay. that will, um, that, that, that people will watch and be enlightened, you mm. know, and, you know, and uh, will um, either spur them into doing something productive or prevent them from doing something destructive. Yes. And then I, like I started to do a research. Mm. I started to do a research on um, human trafficking and irregular migration you know so i went online got a lot of materials and then i said to myself i need to produce a film that has to do that that, that would advocate against human trafficking and irregular migration what touched and, uh, if i may ask on that just so yes. that you don't fly past it because that was actually one of my first questions was what what made for example you could have picked on any number of issues I mean, there are, I've been to Nigeria and there are a lot of socioeconomic issues. You can, could have picked on any one of those, but what settled you on human trafficking? What made that stand out for you? Well, um, in terms of, I mean, Nigeria is a huge country. Mm. When I say Nigeria is a huge country in terms of population, in terms of people, in terms of geographical area, we're a big country. Mm. Yeah? Um, but when you flip that side by side with um, with um, the economics and the po and the politics of the country, and how it affects uh, people, the social aspect of people, welfare and social aspect, you realize that that um, it it it's just a very little. Uh, um, it's just a very let's say it very very um, minimal number trickling down to the masses. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is because people do not get um, that that feel, they don't feel the impact of politics on the economics positively. Mm. That's a, low, a whole lot of people are, or are not able to um, distill, break down those things and get to the core to grab something for themselves. Um, when I say grab something, I mean positively. So what happens is people um, start to give up on the country and decide to leave the country. Mm. You know, and um, when you say, when I say give up and start to leave the country, you find that a, a larger number of people leave the country through irregular means or through illegal means. They go through the borders and then they they go on the, they go that's to the, you, that's just. A, that's how you get to the slaves in Liberia who are Nigerian, right? Is it Libya? Well, uh, yeah, Libya, Libya. Libya. Yes, Libya. Libya. Hmm. Yes. You know, so the you know the 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 flight, the human flight, human capital flight is is mad because people are looking for um, ways to make ends meet. They want to do, I mean, they want to be better for themselves. Yes. They want to earn. They want to um, be productive, and they feel like uh, you know going to Europe or Asia um, will put them there. Will give them a chance to be to earn more. You know, and then there are a lot of lies about um, about how it is there in Europe or Asia or America. 
you know, people come back and, you know, make it seem as if um, everywhere you pick money on the streets Absolutely. and stuff like that. Absolutely. You know, and there's also there's also a lot of deception from relatives or friends, you know, looking to take advantage of people who do not know, who do not have sufficient information. You know, and this does just this just not this does not just happen in Nigeria. It's it's an African thing, you know, sub-Saharan Africa. You know, so there's a lot of human capital flights because the country people people are not able to harness the opportunities, just little available opportunities in the country, you know, to you know make something for themselves. So people just keep living through irregular means or illegal means, you know, and they get caught up. Some of them, their organs are harvested. Some of them get into um, slavery. Uh, some of them get into prostitution and stuff that which stuff which they wouldn't wouldn't you know get into if they were in the country. That's you know? so that that was, that was, because um, one of the, the the terms I picked up from watching yeah. some of the Nigerian movies on is it rock uh, rock TV. Yes, rock TV. Yes, one of the more modern uh, takes on movie making in, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, in Nigeria. So the yeah. the the stories and the and the themes have changed when you look at when you watch rock TV. For me, anyway, um, yeah. they're very modern. So one of the story storylines I picked up is that people talking about having gone to Italy, and if you've been to Italy, it's already known what you were going to do there. So going on picking up on that prostitution, I didn't know that. That's what it means until I saw one of the programs and then uh, it was explained in the uh, somewhere in the storyline that, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's what that's that's um, that's what um, people would normally normally tend to. I mean, I've been to Italy, but I didn't go pro, I didn't go prostituting, you know, so. But it's a, it's um, a different place know. when you're a woman. <laughs> so the <story laughs> you're a woman and you go to Italy, the story is already complete. <laughs> You know, I, I mean, it depends on it depends on how um, how you find yourself in Italy. I, I think that uh, from the research we did uh, going into this film, um, most of the people who left Nigeria or who leave Nigeria through the regular paths or through um, traffickers end up in Italy on the streets prostituting. You know, because um, because that's the path. There's a link between uh, people in Italy and people in Nigeria. You know, so they don't just go there and they say they want to go to the street. The people who who process their papers, process paid for them, paid for that trip, would want them to um, work and pay back the monies paid uh, used in it's this like journey. It's like indentured so servants, servantry. Ex exactly. You know, so this was this was something that um, we looked into. I think it affects the the um, it affects women more. You mm. know, because. Absolutely. You know, men will likely go into um, forced labor, or I mean, they use their their organs for for something. But females, they most likely will end up as prostitutes in Europe. Mm. You get, yes. and um, it's not just about being prostitutes at the end of the day. It's the journey. You know, they get to be they get to be raped, abused, um, you know, maimed or whatever. So it's a painful reality that's happening, and this is because of the nature of what's happening in Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know this is, Just, this is one of, yes michael no 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 please go ahead please go ahead okay. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll okay so this is one of the reasons why um you know i said well, rather than just do something that's completely commercial we will um walk a, a storyline which will uh which will uh, put out more uh, information about the supply chain mm -hmm. the process mm -hmm. the the deception the 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 fake realities or the fake the fake um, information out there, you know, and and you know and the chain, which will also throw more light on the on the chain, how people how um relatives um sell their you know their cousins and nephews or their relatives and put them through that part because they want to make something out of the whole thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So we decided to put this mm -hmm. into a story and um, put it on on you know on, on big picture mm -hmm. and push it out there. Um, mm -hmm. So the film. The film, uh, it was a very interesting, um, you know, uh, production, uh, you know, um, weeks in, in, you know, looking for, you know, we had to get a desert scene. We had to, you know, location was very tough for us because we wouldn't go to the north, you know, um, there's a suggestion in the north, so we couldn't go to go to the north. So we had to look for that scene in the mm -hmm. south here. And also um, the challenges with, um, with um, um, uh, sets, with sets, with, uh, um, location 
with um, so many other things because I mean the film was just one of its mm. kind. I mean, it's not a regular kind of movie. Yes. I'm I'm you know? so excited. I'm so excited to un unpack that a bit more, especially in terms of I'm really interested in um some of the challenges that you potentially faced during production because you, yeah. you mentioned it was 2020. So I'm, I immediately wondered, you know, is it was a pre-pandemic, post-pandemic? Um, and so I, I, I want to just put that in the parking bag. I've made a note of it, but I'd also just like to um, respond to uh, some of the uh, things that you were touching on, both, both yourself and Wendy. I think I'll work myself from the most recent and then try and go back. I just, I think it's interesting, you know, when we speak about human trafficking, um, you know, the production of human trafficking is usually associated on the female body. You know, when you think human trafficking, we immediately go to uh, sex work yeah. and, yeah. you know, and I think it was so interesting that you touched on um, when Wendy mentioned, you know, indentured labor. Um, first of all, I'm surprised to think that a lot of people that have access to information still think that something like indentured labor is a historical issue and not a contemporary one as or at one that we're still dealing with today. But what I also thought or, or found interesting was that was curious as to in terms of highlighting you know when we highlight human traffic what are some of the things and who are some of the people that are most given voice to for example uh just coming back to this idea of forced labor i mean uh it's not only Europe, you know, even on the continent it signs and are caught in sort of engagements that see them having to trade uh, labor, you know, to make up for it. So um, I am interested in, in how the information is getting out there. I know that there are big organizations doing the work already. I think that you also partnered and you approached um, some organizations um, yeah. uh, during the production of the movie. Yeah, the fact that you decided that this is what I want to do, this is what I'm interested in, um, and I'm going to pursue it. So yeah. I suppose my very long-winded question to you is, uh, because you wear many different hats, and I'm interested in how did the hat, how did the hat of brand manager assist or help the hat mm -hmm. of independent filmmaker of independent content producer coming to now coming to to a film you know i said i said something i said um, the nature of our environment and how people are desperate to make a living you know for themselves because a lot of people are, are constantly losing hope in Nigeria, yeah. in Sub-Saharan Africa, in countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, the reality about the matter is Nigeria is not that bad. Yes, Nigeria, people may, may hear, you know, you guys may hear a lot of stuff, a Boko Haram this and all that, but people are still making it in Nigeria. Yes, you know, it's like the fact you that get. in South Africa, when you speak to Americans, they think that we are just killing every, each other every day. That's just how I find it so interesting that we 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 are actually talking about this because um you know you're in the media industry, you're in the branding industry, so storytelling, yeah. uh putting yeah. together information is so important, but also then like mediating that information to the public because you're absolutely right, you know. Um I've always been interested in uh producers makers content makers that in some instances speak from the outside mm -hmm. so they are reporting from the outside looking in mm -hmm. you know and the language that you use doing that is not going to be the same as the individual telling you the story from, from the, the inside, inside. Yeah. yeah you know and so yeah. i think that you know what you're saying is so Im important because it sounds like I was and I was thinking about this this morning because I was watching the news. I don't know if you've been following what's been happening in some of the provinces of in South Africa. And I've I've been yes, religiously yes, following. Okay, was that yesterday? Or the day? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like religiously following this from Monday when it started up until today, and it was so fascinating to hear how 
I won't mention brand names because, you know, we're trying to be better people, but certain news broadcasters, you know, the kind of languaging they were using. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, if I was from America, or if I was from Italy, I'd be like the whole of South Africa is on fire. This is wow. an unprecedented, never seen before, wow. you know, so like, I mean, no we, just, we just finished things. with the riots in, in America. I mean, you mean this is wow. worse than that? Oh, you, you, so you, you get I, the point. Yes, I think it's so important. Like what we know of our fellow countries. And I think that, and, and I know that um, I do not want us to sort of veer too far off why we're actually here, which is to talk about this project. And I want to come yeah. um, I'm, yeah. I'm back to it. But I, I just think it's, on this project. It's, it's very interesting. The role and the responsibility that we have all of us in the various spaces that we take up as mm -hmm. content producers or mediators mm -hmm. the responsibility we have to to present factually yes exactly you know that's very right. right. and sensationalized. You, there is a lot of sensationalizing everybody that is reporting is sensationalizing right, right. because they want attention it's about yes. validation so and attention yeah, the, and, feeding people feeding the frenzy because that gets more views yeah you sort of want the traffic it's about traffic it's about hits for them it's about numbers for them you know bad news sells that's just the reality of things mm -hmm. you get um you know but like i was saying um so now it's not that bad you know mm -hmm. it could be better but it's all hope is not lost mm -hmm. yeah why am mm -hmm. i saying this because um this guy who take that route that irregular route to get out from um, sub-Saharan Africa or Nigeria, they spend a lot of money. You get, so they spend as much as $1,000 to mm. go this route, you get. Now you take mm. that $1,000, you start a small business, you know, it mustn't be, it mustn't be um, the, the fancy kind of business, you know? Mm. Um, like I said, in Nigeria, we have the numbers, we have um, over 200 million people. So mm. if you start a small, a small food business, I tell you, and you, you throw away shame, you throw away all the, all the whole uh, luxury kind of, um, all the fake life, you throw them away, I just focus, I want to do this food business, I want to sell, I want to attend to people who, who, are, who are breakfast, who, 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 um, who want to eat breakfast or lunch or dinner, just pick, pick, just pick one and you focus. Mm. I tell you, in no mm. time, you're, only, you're going to be able to turn over the $1,000 you know, as much as possible, so many mm. times. But the point mm. is, just this quick, I want to make it fast. Now. You know, I'm going through. It's I want to immediate it gratification. You get, mm. you get. So take mm. that $1,000 mm. and go through Libya um, mm. by the and grace of God. And then you're going God, through a lifetime you know, of suffering. God protected me. Mm. You, you get, I get so much religion, religious, yeah, religion about it. We can get so mm. religious about it. We go to the desert by the grace of God. Right. <laughs> By the grace of God, all this is going to be right. Nobody's going to catch me. Because that is going to start another program. It's, it's going to last eight amazing. hours. <laughs> it's amazing because in the film, yeah, you see yeah. how you see how people are praying for their 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 children, praying for their relatives, taking them to traditional homes or spiritual homes mm -hmm. to get prayers so that they could cross the path, go through that path, and make it. Which, in actual sense, if you're going through any regular part for migration, your chances of making it is very slim. The mm. chances, chances are that you're going to end up, you know, um, in, in one ring or the other, in, in, a, in a cage or something. The chances, the chances are slim. So why do you have to go that route with $1,000? Mm. You know, and sometimes the borrow to go through this route. So we get back to the film. The film says that, look, you see this Why route. should we see this? Chances, why, why should why we see this film? <laughs> why should we why see this film? See why is no no from a, like just for those that are going to be watching and those that are yeah. tuning in to see this um this because is why you are, should see this film he's about to make this you thing. know yeah like because there's so many important things you touch on i do think that like the reasons that force people to take these kinds of decisions and i think already you know the lengths that people go through to make that journey across the oceans or wherever it is they're going. These are extreme circumstances. And yeah. it really does say, and I know that as much as we're saying that, you know, things aren't as bad as they are being portrayed to be. Um, 
but I do think that there is something that's pushing people out there, you know? Um, so, yeah. Okay. With um, be, that being said, Michael, I do want Roy to finish up uh, with why you need to see this film. Yes. So mm. the reason why people need to see this film, like I said at first, is about awareness. Mm. Now, it is not a sad film. It's a film that mixes uh, reality with comedy. Mm. Mm. It's about hope. Mm. It's about uh, the story. It's about the, 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 uh, an opportunity to restart your life, even after you failed. Because the film doesn't just end up with people getting to prostitution. It ends up with people who were deceived and eventually tried to escape and escaped mm -hmm. and got back to the country and restarted their life and eventually made it in the country. Mm -hmm. So not everybody will get out of Africa. Not everybody will get out of Nigeria or Sub-Saharan or South Africa. Not everybody's going to get out. Yes. But it's about hope mm -hmm. for those who, are, who have tried and um, have been able to escape, for those who are looking to get out and mm -hmm. cannot get out, for those who are not thinking about that route, just hope. Mm -hmm. Just hope in Nigeria, just hope. Living I, I in would like in Africa. To, to expand uh, on the person in Nigeria thinking about yeah. it. Um, what is the truth that this film is, is gonna, sh what truth is it going to show them? Why do they need to watch it before they make that final decision? Okay. So first, um, it's, like I said, it's about awareness. Mm -hmm. It shows that the regular part is, is a dangerous part, mm. is a dead part. Mm. It also shows that just a regular part too. So mm. I'm not saying, we're not saying don't migrate. Yes. So we're saying if you want to migrate, why not do it the proper way? Yes. You get the point. So um, just a regular part to it, mm. you know, that's what the film shows. It shows There's that nothing if wrong you're not able to- wanting to leave the country, but just make sure that you are safe. Because exactly. chances are you will end up yes. an indentured servant yes. or prostitute exactly. or a exactly. owner. Yes. Yes. So that's what we were saying. There's nothing wrong with migrating, mm. but do it the right way. Yes. Don't be too trusting. Don't be too trusting. There's so much mm. information out there. You can educate yourself about ways to apply for visa. Mm. You know, you mm. could, I mean, the lead character was trying was trying to read, um, trying to go for medicine. That's what she wanted to do. But mm. she didn't have sufficient information to get her on the spot the regular way or the legal way. Mm. But because she was trusting, she mm. trusted in a relative, mm. she was put on that path and eventually trafficked. And she escaped and found her way back to achieving what she wanted to achieve by going on that path in the first place. So the point is, there is enough information out there for you not to end up being trafficked irregularly or being trafficked at all. Yes. So yes. you need to, the, the film is about going out to get the proper information mm. before you go on that path. We're not saying you don't migrate, you know, freedom of movement is part of the UN Act, yes. you know, so you can migrate, but do it the proper way. Well, if you do it the regular way or the improper way, chances are you end up either dead, um, decapacitated, handicapped, mm -hmm. or dead, you know? And so let, that's what we're trying to say. Okay, before we, 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 we go to the word handicapped, I have a few, just one or two questions um, yes. left. Yes. My first one was in addressing human trafficking, because human trafficking is not a popular topic. I've only really seen human trafficking being, being handled uh, as a regular topic when it comes to movies that are about the drug cartel, you know, the South Americans and, and yeah. America and so on. That's where I've seen yeah. uh, a regular a presentation of the human trafficking theme, yeah. but yeah. generally it's not a uh, uh, it's not a topic that is um, you know regularly picked by other movie houses or other cultures or countries. So, yeah. did you experience any type of pushback in spreading this message? Yes, yes. Okay, so um, before uh, we. While we were in production, now it's pre-production, we, our distribution part was um, taken to uh, public places and just enlighten people. That's what we wanted to do with the film. 
Yeah. It is about creating awareness in public places where people who couldn't afford to watch, you mm. go to the regular cinema and watch. Mm. That was mm. the whole objective. Yes. Um, now, it meant we had to partner with certain organizations and stuff yes. like that. Mm. Now, I don't want to call names or, you know, say how, stuff. How I wish we you could. Know, but, but, you know, I tell Name you something. Shame. <laughs> I <laughs> wasn't going to be taken to courts. You see, it's it's um it's 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 I mean we had we had people who who we partnered with, of course. We had partners, we have partners mm -hmm. on the film, on the production. Uh, um, um however, it was a big challenge. It was a big challenge getting getting um the government to come in on this. Okay. Um we wrote we wrote to the there we wrote to the presidency. We wrote to the presidency. I mean, um, the vice president, fantastic guy. That's Nigerian vice president, fantastic guy. We wrote to him. And then um, he he took it up and uh, directed us to, or, or pushed, or will I say, um, mini to the to the agency in charge. Hmm. Now, um, we have a partnership with the agency. Um, of course, there's been a lot of internal issues, changes um, at the head, at the helm of affairs of the agency. But we have a partnership. Um, we haven't yet been able to put pen to paper on that partnership because at, at any point, at every point we try to um, sign it off, then there's a change, you know, in leadership. Oh. And then it's like you, and then it's like you start all over, all over again. <laughs> so it's been a challenge. But um, the partnership is almost, we're almost there with the partnership. Hopefully before the end of this year, we should be done with it. Then COVID came up. COVID came up and that became a challenge again. Now we'll stop. You know, now I say something to you. Now the initial the initial distribution plan was to um it was, it, we're not supposed to. I mean we've we've not we've never thought about making money from it because human trafficking is a big deal. Yes. Uh, if you look at the illegal trade business and in, in in you know the illegal trade industry, the top most on it is arms. Arms trade is a big deal. Yes. Yes. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Then you have drugs. Mm -hmm. And then you have human trafficking. Mm -hmm. so these are the top three um, illegal, top three businesses in the illegal uh, industry or whatever they call it. You get, so it's a big deal. And the world is beginning to shine more light on it. Awareness is beginning to come, you know, come up more on it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to lend our voice to this whole um, thing, you know, put, out, put, put content out there that people can actually watch and relate to. You get so because of COVID, what we had to do was suck pedal on the public exhibition and go to the cinema. So mm. we and we got into the cinema February 2020. Mm. Oh. Now the thing about it is we were supposed to our cinema world was supposed to start on say um on a certain day. The day before the certain day, the first COVID case in Nigeria was <laughs> announced. <laughs> So again, wow, big wow, problem. Wow. <laughs> big problem. Do we withdraw? I mean, we had, you know, with cinema, you need to spend some money with um, marketing, mm. you know, PR or whatever. Mm. So we had put out put out cash out there, you know, made some investment. And then they announced the case today. And the next day we're supposed to start our cinema around it. So the question was, do we withdraw? Or do we just <laughs> let it go? <laughs> now, what did you do? <laughs> so, so it was like the world, the world was against us. <laughs> You know, it didn't you know, want us to come out. Oh. <laughs> it didn't want us to come out. The, the, the of phones were not working. <laughs> wow, wow, okay. wow, wow. Okay, but good thing about it is just before then, Emirates took up the film. So Emirates oh, okay. took up the film, Emirates and South African Airlines, oh. you know, took up the okay. film. But what happened with SA Airline was SA Airline was going down. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about it. It's, you know, we, we, you know, it's, <laughs> okay, it never happens. <laughs> In this country, we act like we don't know what you're talking about. What is he talking about? Okay. 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 Know. Okay. <laughs> you know what? You know. <laughs> you don't know. Big <laughs> what is he talking about? Because wait, wait, wait. This guy wait, 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 everything signed, everything done, and then boom, <laughs> SAL was going to close it. Wow, God, so I was like, Man, she was this, was all this. So you say, you say, when do they have pushbacks? Oh my God, 
<laughs> we have different <laughs> so the, I can imagine the amount of you know resilience that you had to because also you you know one can I suppose one can navigate one can navigate insolvency and a project oh failing due God. to that but the a pandemic you know how do you navigate that how do you navigate this you know? so Michael Michael it was a big deal but good thing um, yes. um Emirates Airlines took it up in November just before the pandemic started in Africa, but before it hit us big time, you know? Yeah. So in November, they took it up, it was showing, you know, so I was already getting, Amazing. you know, getting, you know, stuff, you know, feedback mm. and all that. And then we went mm. to go into cinema, um, 2020, February, and that stuff started. So they didn't want us to come out. And then it was, do we hold? Now, it, it wasn't just holding, but how long do we hold for? Yes. That was the question. Yeah, no. You know, having having made the investment, how long do we hold for? How long mm. you get now? Let's say let's say I said okay, let's hold. The next question is at the point where we were where we are, we would now say okay, maybe they say come out, and then the cinema start to open. Would would our film be top priority for distributors? Mm. Because I mean, then there's other films which have been put on hold, um, other Hollywood movies mm. and other films. Would we be you know? So these were the questions I asked myself. Now, what was going to be um, the, the um, you know, we've made investment. What's going to be the return on investment, yeah. you know, at that period? Yeah. Because, I mean, it, I mean, we're going to lose. Yeah. So I said to myself, you know, yeah. I told my team, I told my team, I said, you know what? Um, now, there's still, there's still speculations out there. Um, is COVID real? Is COVID not real? Let's just push. So we mm. left the cinema. We left the cinema run. <laughs> you get because I mean, at that point, people were still saying, <laughs> um, "Is COVID it was real?" Still a it... Myth. Yeah, it was still a myth for a lot of people. Yeah, mm. so put, but, yeah, it, I mean, it was like conspiracy, but man, did it affect us big time? Big it time. did. You it know, did. Big time. The conspiracy you know, but... is real. <laughs> but then again, I said to myself, "Man, Roy, you need to just keep pushing." So I told my guys, "Let's push that. Out. Let's put that apart. Let's just keep pushing." And then um, Emirates reached reached to us and said, "Please." They were supposed to take it for six months, and I said, please extend to till um, 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 third quarter in 2020 because of the pandemic. Mm. And I said, extend for free. And mm. I said, again, for free. <laughs> well, okay, the film is about awareness. You know, it's about you awareness to, go back for to, your, to your altruistic intentions. Yeah, and I said, okay, fine, <laughs> so let it run for free. Yeah, let it run for free. You know, and then yeah, and then that continued. Um, till about August or thereabout, and then we went off that run. And then in 20, you know, last quarter in 2020, I said to myself, okay, again, what can we do? Um, meanwhile, we had reached out to a lot of people in South Africa, um, mm -hmm. distributors, um, T, um, channels, um, exhibitors, whatever, just to take the film. But it was very difficult. We kept getting no, no, no. And then I went to, um, um, I spoke to some other distributors, and my distributor in Nigeria told me, um, you know, Roy, um, we have X and Y and Z, the one to take up the film, but for a ridiculous amount. And I'm like, you know, no, we won't take that. Mm. And I said to myself, let's reach out to uh, multi choice. So, we reached out to multi choice and we started the conversation. And then they said, fine, let's do it. And then we agreed and signed the contract. And then, um, the contract is going to be for, for, for two years from October. You know, I said, fine, let it just run for two years, no problem. And then I said to my team, we need to start another film again. So now, I would love to know, are we allowed to be told what the name of that film was? Because I noticed in your bio, you didn't mention the name of the film that was running on Emirates. Um, so the name of the film on Emirates is Handicapped. It's Handicapped, the same <laughs> film. Okay, the, one, the same film? Yes, the same film. Okay. The okay. first, the, the, yes, the one that was released into cinema. Okay, um, last, in 2020. Yes. Yeah, so 2020. So, okay, so when you say you're going to give us release dates for now, how does how does that work? Okay, so um, I don't have release dates, no official release dates yet. Okay. Um, okay, so I need to tell you something. The way it works in Nigeria is different from the way it works in South Africa. Okay, okay. You get Now in Nigeria, uh, we don't have a film institute or a village or something. You know, in South Africa, you have the structures where you could go yes. and then, um, you know, you could get some funding for your film and stuff like that. Mm. Yes, there's a structure in South Africa. You have big studios. You have um, you have uh, big studios in South Africa. I don't want to mention names, but big studios. I mean, I was at Discord the last time 
And then, you know, we saw, you know, I saw big studios there, but doing some action film, jumping off cliffs, um, doing stuff you inside. Were, you were in a studio in South Africa and you didn't see me. <laughs> no, that was when I came in 2016 now. Uh, that was 2016 now, we saw. Oh, okay, I saw you. Oh, that was the, yeah. that was the reason yeah. you came. Okay, yeah, I was about to be offended. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> 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 Okay, so you know, so the way it works there is quite different here. Uh -huh. You know, um, so here you need to you need to source for funds yourself. Mm. You have to get out there, roll up your sleeves, and go and look for funds either to sponsorship or through um, through um, grants and stuff like that. So it's quite different here. That's one you need to look for distributors yourself. You have to take your film and go and sign the deals by yourself. Mm you get and um you need to i mean everything it's it's, part, it's basically you doing everything by yourself you know so it's not like government support or anything or all that i mean these things come up once in a while but you know it's it's quite challenging getting access to them mm. you'll get and i tell you what you know i said to you i said um i've learned on the job mm. you know being a producer, I've learned on it. I keep learning every day and keep, you know, knowing, um, getting, knowing how to do things uh, much better and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, for Handicap, Handicap was a film, it was 90%, um, well, I said it was 80% story and probably 10% comedy. Mm -hmm. That was Handicap for you because, I mean, it had a strong team you get. And I see the reviews, distributors, uh, strong team. Um, in fact, they always rated the film 18, mm. you know, because because of the team, because of the sex, violence, mm. uh, drugs and stuff. So they always rated it, 18. it felt authentic. It felt Yeah, authentic. yeah. Yeah. So although everybody says all the distributors are strong team, strong storyline, but not commercial. So it's not a commercial team, not commercial. You mm. get. So now, now um, having learned from that, because what I've, what I've come to find is that um, your film, films created are defined by demography. Yes. So, so that means that in, in Nigeria, we're known for romance and comedy. Yes. You get drama, comedy, that's what we're known for. Mm. You get. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, the story, but you find that story is always very lean. It's always very lean. Yes, yes. You know? That's, that's so you why the, the stories are always a, a, a repetition. As long as the exactly. entertainment there is there, people will watch. Exactly, people will watch. A repetition of the same thing, just so, different people. So you see, that's what's happening here. So different people, almost the same storyline, boy meets girl, boy meets girl, mm -hmm. or boy is poor, mm -hmm. girl is this and all that, they meet and then a happy ending or whatever, you know, or family is having some scuffles and uh, eventually they settle it or whatever. mother doesn't like the what and they go to the, exactly. the river and kill it. Yeah. You get, mm. but but really, really, that that is beyond what's happening in Nigeria. Yeah. You get. Okay. I mean, um, our next film, its title is called Itiju. Itiju. So it's I T I J U. I like that you spell it already because you know I'm gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> I T I J U. Itiju. Okay. Itiju. Okay. All right. So, like I said, it's about mental health. Mm. Mm. It's about mental health. It's about um, hope again. Mm. So there are different angles to mental health. Mm. Uh, people, people. The reason why people suffer from various kinds of mental health is largely because of some undiagnosed um, issues or some trauma or some psychological issues affecting them in their home, in their, you know, with learning, with, um, you know, it could be autism, it could be anything you get, but they don't know because um, um, chances that people are living with these things here. Um, is um, chances are high, or you know, is, yeah, chances are high, but yeah, but the point is, diagnosis is not there is um, there's little basis for diagnosis, so people do not know what what's actually happening to them. So, mm -hmm. and they're told they're lazy, or they don't know anything, or they're not intelligent, or they're slow, or something, but it could be because of certain things. You know, happening to them, certain conditions which they don't know about. Yes, undiagnosed yes, conditions. Then, I mean, that is exactly. I, I feel like what you're talking about is a general African problem once again. Yes, and, yes, it is. Um, it is. And all of those things that go with diagnosis are things that are really frowned upon on our continent. And exactly. that is so, why on this platform, on Story of Her, Story of Her yeah. has a lot to do also with the psyche. Uh, you know, the fact that 
there are we live in a in a society of preconceived ideas. And also, exactly. I'm sorry to mention this when I've got two males on the panel, but very patriarchal ideas, ideologies. <laughs> but I, 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 I say this because, for example, talk about um, mental illness. Uh, you know, I'm in a lot of groups with women. Yeah. And when you realize, when you talk about mental illness, you realize that, for example, there are so many wives that actually have some challenges of one challenge or another but based on a mental condition that is undiagnosed exactly you know um so so this is these are the things that um you know we we are beginning to um be more light on you know that people ha actually have mental um, health challenges not because they want it but because they're struggling with things that are undiagnosed or mm -hmm. misdiagnosed you Tell get mm. yes mm. yes and the thing about it is once they are able to find out what it is they're struggling with there is hope for them mm. at the you know at the end so that's what we're trying to say that look there are issues on ground when you when somebody has this kind of issues or someone is not able to adapt easily or learn easily or read easily it's not it's not because the person is slow but it might be something you know so we must you must we must move away from the religious aspect and begin to look at things medically mm -hmm. and begin to solve them because um, mm -hmm. things as much as um, it could be different, it could be changing your reading pattern or using reading aids or stuff or eating certain or changing your diet or lifestyle that could actually help one, you know, or removing or removing oneself from certain environments, you know, mm -hmm. could help one, you know, maintain a healthy, um, you know, mental state. Mm -hmm. You get so we're trying to say that if one is able to, um, um, discover this and um, begin to work on it so that you know one could actually turn out better one's yeah. life one's family mm -hmm. the family the society could turn out better mm -hmm. but now rather than just go with um, a strong team completely we are about to do something that has um say 50 50. okay so 50 percent you know story and 50 percent comedy you know because so there are so many challenges in africa in nigeria mm -hmm. you know and you see that entertainment that People watch, and it's the same story. It actually helps. It helps. It helps reduce the tension, you know, somehow. Yeah. Because um, because there's so many challenges, you know. So we want to put out a story and have people sit down, watch the story, take something out of take something out of it, and also be entertained. That's what we're trying to do now with the teacher. You. I get you. You are yes. trying to cater for the audience that is being filtered out because. Uh, of they can't sit through something that is serious because they've already got so many problems. Exactly. Um, and, exactly. and, you know, in many situations, you find that um, you might not grasp the entire message while it is being told or you are viewing it. And yeah. I think um, Michael is, is somehow very good at, at this way. Um, he reflects, then he will go and reflect on things and you know, um, and that is what happens with storytelling is that you, I may have an experience and I might not grasp everything of that experience here, but a year down the line, I will make a decision that's based on what I was exposed to at my time of witnessing that experience, of yeah. witnessing that story. So that's what I'm saying, yeah. that it plants seeds. Yeah. Yes. And that is what well, you can do. Um, yes, Michael? Yeah. Oh, I just I just wanted to add. Um, I actually my 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 battery power is running low, so if I get cut off, okay. uh, please forgive me. But what I did want to say was, um, you raised such an important. Well, I I can't tell you how many important points you've raised, right? Like some parts were sounding like a masterclass, some parts were sounding like a lecture. You know, so thank you I so can much. I tell you now that this that is not going to be them. one session. Um, it's not going to be closer than one <laughs> yeah. session. It's gonna be a couple yeah. of, of YouTube. Yeah. Questions. Wendy, so, I'll win the session. <laughs> so thank okay. you so much. No, thank you so much for the for the for the for the insight. But I think you know you raised something that's so important with regards to storytelling because you know when we when you mentioned storytelling, I immediately started thinking about uh, mythology 
you know, like mythological stories as well as yeah. folk stories and how, <clears throat> yes, they are usually described as something that is a fairy tale that you can't touch, it's fantasy, it's imagination. However, if we look at the most popular uh, mythological tales, or if we look at the most popular um, stories or folklore stories that we grew up yeah. with, that our parents grew up with, that their parents yeah. grew up with, if we, if we investigate and you, you deconstruct that story for yourself, you will see that the, the, you'll start to see the benefits of storytelling because a story becomes a space where you can save an experience mm -hmm. for people for future generations to refer back to. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of our histories, a lot of our experiences, particularly on the continent, are stored mm -hmm. in stories. And not only sort of the stories that you tell orally, obviously now with modernization, you still see, even in modern movie storylines, you still see uh, elements or characteristics of traditional story to the fact that you know, before one embarks on a great journey, like, you know, uh, leaving their country to go, go migrating, whether it is legal or illegal, the whole ritualistic practice of going to a spiritual space to be preyed on because there's this journey that one must embark on. So just to, to say that I, I really see the power in storytelling, in unpacking and figuring out issues that might not that might not necessarily be easy to deal with in reality. Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. storytelling as a space that people can go to to go find resources that they aren't finding, um, you know, mm -hmm. accessible. I think that is, the, um, the, for me, the, the wonderful thing about the story because, uh, the, about the work that Roy is doing, because I, my, my other question was that, remember I said somewhere long ago that I had two questions. I wanted him to just, compare for us the reception of from the people in Nigeria who experienced the movie to the, his clients outside of Nigeria. What was the feedback like? What was the response to your work? Because obviously oh. you are telling a story that is, because I, I've realized about this, maybe not only about Nigeria, but about South Africa as well. We tend to deny the, 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 the bits that we don't want to admit are happening in our society. You know, we, we tend to not want to admire anything that brings light onto that. So I wanted, I was wondering if that was your experience. Did, uh, how did you experience it in terms of how people experienced it and, and, and responded to it in Nigeria and outside? Well, um, when, when I look at the response of people, people watched it for various reasons, you know? So you take, you take a sample of um, some people. I have people tell me, wow, nice one, um, uh, good story, uh, um, great awareness, great storytelling and all that. They enjoyed it. Yes. Then I have some people who, some cinema, um, I got feedback from some cinema goers who um, went into the cinema with their girlfriends to, to you know, watch something that would be very romantic, but saw a story with a strong team, and then they were disappointed. So, so it's quite different. Well, the truth, that's the thing, that's what I'm trying to get to, is that we don't like the truth, because the truth tends to be unsavory. It, te it, it tends to be unpalatable, you know? No, 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 where to, where to see? I think it's it's when you say you don't like the truth, it's diff, it's the truth means different things to different people. You mm -hmm. get so if you take a small sample of of people, you find that that small sample has different. It's a it's a mix of different mm -hmm. personality with different needs. Mm -hmm. You get so somebody who needs a romantic, um, you know, a space. They you don't know, need dark, to see all cinema, of that. They don't need a strong team. You get yeah. ask somebody who goes to the to the cinema with the hope of learning something, you know, sees it as like, wow, I really need to push this or I really need to begin to rethink my my whole plans and all mm. that. So you see, different that small sample has different people with different needs. So you know it all depends on on who the small who the people it's are. You get? Mm. <laughs> so that's that's the truth. So the truth to the person who wants a romantic scene, a romantic getaway, is it's it's not the truth to somebody who wants to, you know, get, you know, think, who wants to think, 
Yeah. So that's that's the that's the situation. But now my 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 point, Roy, is that the truth is inconvenient. Of course. Do you understand? Of course. I'm, I'm speaking from that point of view that okay, you went in. I mean, I experienced this with my kids. We go for a movie. We think it's going to be like this, and then we still sit through the movie. We come out either being entertained or having learned something. We're not dwelling mm -hmm. on the fact that I was actually not looking for an action. <laughs> we were going for comedy, but that does not stop us from from enjoying the action. Do you understand? What I'm saying? So my, my my point goes back to my point of they went for romance. They found it's about the harsh reality of things, and now it's not convenient. You know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, probably it it made him lose the the chick he took to the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> You see, you created relationship problems. <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> anyway, you see. Okay, so um, all right. So uh, the the next thing I wanted to ask is not really related to the movie. So we're gonna wait on details. I want to just uh, wrap up the conversation on handicap. Yeah. It's um. We, we're going to wait on detail for release for, for, for release in South Africa. Am I, am I correct? Um, handicap. I, I think I think African magic, Africa urban magic urban is everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, so you you should be able to get the film on urban and also on show marks. I'm going to ask demand. you to send me some links so that I can okay. put them in the description because I'm going to play um, the the trailer. Okay, um, you have the trailer. You have the trailer. I have the trailer. You sent me the trailer. Okay. Um, yeah. And if you can send me some links as to where it's playing at the moment, you know, the different channels or platforms, that would be okay. nice because then I can immediately after this, watching this, a client or a person can see where they can go for it. But um, yeah. Okay. So, okay. okay. Oh, Wendy, it's not, it's not playing on any place for now. Okay. Yeah. No free. It's not free on any place. Okay. So it's, it's, it's from October on African Magic and um, on Shudo Marks. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay, so we will eagerly be waiting with bated breath. Um, when is uh, when is the is the work for the for Ituji? Ituju, Itu Itu Ituju, Ituju. Is the work for Ituju happening at the moment? Sorry. Okay, so for Ituju, <laughs> for Ituju, we are on. Um, we are currently pre-producing. We are doing the recce. We are having um. Um, we are producing materials. We are on the screw. We are we are we are on through the pre part of production. Actual production should start um, end of end of this year. Um, so I don't I don't rush I don't rush my films. Yeah, yes. for handicap we still handicapped production. Uh, production started in twenty seventeen, hmm. and we finished production in twenty nineteen. That's amazing. You get also, so. Uh, let's I don't just know. talk about the magnitude of the project. I mean. I can already see from the trailer, Roy, that that was a big project. Yeah, um, there, are, yeah. there are a lot of people in there, and there is a lot of intense acting and the the different locations. I can see it that that took a lot. That, yeah, it me, did. I don't know. I'm not a filmmaker, but when I look at what went into it, when I look at compare it to uh, movies that I think are good movies, you know, I can see that it really looks like an intense project yes it it was an intense project it was um it took blood and sweat mm. yeah and um it was self-funded so uh okay. you know wow. so it was like it was like i this had to work mm. and has to work and it will work yes. because i didn't want to do yeah, no i didn't want to do area. yeah no options i didn't want to do a, a film that was going to go that was not going to go to cinema yes. i wanted to do a cinema standard film Hmm. So right from the director to the DOP to the actors, I ensured that we got everything right. Yeah. Um, of course, it was it was my first big picture project, hmm. and um, I said I said I wanted to actually make a statement. You know, I wanted cinema, I wanted the distributors to see the film and say, "Wow, nice one." You know, and, you know um, good it's picture. Just... It's not just nice one. From what I can see, it's not just nice one. It is like you made a statement. You, you, you. Yeah. you it was like saying, "I'm, I've arrived." You, you entered into the room, and you set up your own table, 
and you are here. Yeah, yeah, but I'm still, I'm still, I'm still bleeding from it. Lost well, a lot yeah. of blood. Well, it was it it was worthwhile. It was worthwhile for for the quality of work that you end up ended up producing, and I think for where it sounds like it's going from what you're saying, it's going very far. And now, um, I mean, it should pave way for greater things. And you've set a very high bar for yourself. So I yeah. imagine that we are after we finish watching this, we are going to be like, okay, what else is he bringing? We are mm. now waiting. <laughs> All right. Not sure, Wendy. Yes. So. Tell me about Chewu Harojulu. Harojulu. Chewu is a is a he's a he's a director or mm. producer. He is um, a colleague in the industry and a friend. And how, how was it working uh, with, with him? Fantastic. Um, it's good to work with a, a director who who um, understands business too. Mm. Yeah, um, most times you find directors who are only on the creative side. Okay. You get. Well, like I said to you at the beginning of this um, conversation, that if you create something and you can't sell it, then it's nonsense. Mm. You get. Absolutely. So I like to work with people who who have a knack for how to also sell it. Because when you're making something that you want to sell, if you do not think about selling it while making it, then at the end of the day, it's going to be a hard sell. Yeah. You yeah. get so Shil is he's a great guy. He is he we're working on this next film together. Okay. Was also. this also his first film or does he have um... this was his first he has other films, but this was his first cinema film. Okay, okay. Yes. So he, he um just just um just a series on TV it's called Squatters. I don't know if you've seen it, Squatters. No, I'm making you know? notes. I'm making notes. Yeah, so he's the director and producer of that one. Okay. Then um, he's also done um, the hair, the hair. Mm -hmm. Then, then he's done um, um, some, other, he's done some the, other the, the air, as in somebody who who has in, is inherited. Yeah. Okay. Yes, is it air or hair? Is it air, right? Air. air. Hmm. The air. Okay, so he's done the air. Fabulous. Also... Fabulous. Did you did you did you just hear yourself? <laughs> oh. <laughs> See. Uh, uh, Wendy, you know, sometimes it's difficult pronouncing all these things. You know? I know, you know, I know. I mean, you don't have to tell yeah. me. I'm I'm struggling along, but I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so he's also done some other ones. Um, he has he has some 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 um, some pictures in in his catalog, and um, we're working on so many other things. Hmm. You get you can Google him. You see some of the things he's done. I, I don't have well, the names. Well, of we some. did he's Google done. him, and we got stuck on how handsome he is but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> oh, his head is going to be swelling uh, i'm going to tell you <laughs> if i tell him that his head is not swelling <laughs> okay so um uh, I, oh, there is there is one more thing i wanted to yeah ask is that um in the next couple of years where do you see yourself i mean like i think you you when you speak you, you're so humble because you speak as if you haven't arrived as yet. I think that you've made a great entrance. So, mm. what do you what What are you hoping to achieve? What do you want to achieve on this journey? What milestones have you set for yourself? Okay. Um, well, I'm building the business. Mm. I see myself first as a businessman before anything. Mm. So I'm building a business, a business that has. Um, in in, a, in in its conglomerate, um, a, a production outfit, a media outfit, media and advertising outfit. Mm. Um, um, I see we're going to have a studio, mm. that's a big studio um, where we produce films and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I don't know how it's going to come. Most times, when I think about things, I don't think about the how. Yeah. I yes. just I just think about you know I just think about doing it. Um, I agree I with the philosophy. Going. You just need to start, and the how takes care of itself. Exactly. So most people who I find that most people who who keep thinking about how to do it and keep thinking about how to fine tune it and this and that never really get anything done, mm -hmm. you know. So I just do. I just think about something, mm -hmm. and then I think about building a team around it, and I and I just say, look, we're going to get this thing done. I don't mm -hmm. know how we're going to do, it, but let's just start. Mm -hmm. You get. Yeah. Um. So I see that so we're going. I'm going to. Ha um. I'm building a conglomerate of um production outfits like a studio word, you know i like big words yeah. i like big words yeah. that, that mean important things that bring money 
Yeah, you know, South African, South African ladies, they are quite, you know, <laughs> they, they have a big, they get so, you know. <laughs> so, I'm not so, trying to contradict know? anything you just said. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, so it's good. It's going to have a, like I said, a production outfit, a studio, uh, media advertising. Then it's going to have a logistics and transportation. Uh, we already have that. Exactly. Yes. And exactly. then we're going to do so. <laughs> I see, I see Tom Ford, yeah? Tom yeah. Ford, you know, he's a director, a producer. He also creates products. Yes. You know, he has a business, you know? Yeah. That's how I see myself, you know? Okay, um, amazing. I like, I like his, I like his business, the, his, his creative acumen. business side, mm -hmm. his business acumen. Mm -hmm. um, then I like, I like his ability to think about something and achieve it, create it and see it's end to end um sites you know so he sees the creation to the distribution and sales and the whole building part of it mm -hmm. so i see myself as a nigerian tom ford who's going okay. to create things uh -huh. you know of course i'm straight um so he's <laughs> going to create things like you know as saying. the years go your your dream yeah. has either get bigger or get streamlined so yes. you are allowed to dream as as big and as wide as you want um, yes. And you're allowed to change things um, along the way as you discover bigger and exactly. better. Exactly. See, yes. You see, one thing. One thing I've learned, or I have, um, I have told myself is um, opportunities. Um, open yourself up to opportunities. When they come, think about them, jump on them, ride on them, and just take take that ride to wherever it takes you. Mm -hmm.